I'm Jason Epperson. This is RV Miles, and it's time for the latest in RV and camping news. There's so much to get to this week, folks, so we're just going to jump right in. First up, in response to customer complaints raised over fifth wheel trailer frame issues, Grand Design RV has announced it will extend its three year structural warranty to include five years of coverage for the vehicle's frame from the date of purchase. The change effective for all current models has been made retroactive to the 2020 model year. For the past few years, certain customers have been complaining on social media and in YouTube videos about issues with Grand Design fifth wheels, as well as some other brands. The reported problems arise on models with trailer frames manufactured by third party supplier Lippert Components. Folks have been calling this issue frame flex. Excessive frame flex is a condition in which the trailer's frame warps out of the normal specifications. It might result in cracked fiberglass on the exterior and cause the walls and flooring of the trailer to separate from the frame. Some of these frame related problems may also be related to improper attachment to the frame by the RV manufacturer. The situation came to a head throughout the first half of this year as several social media content creators have documented issues with frame problems from Grand Design customers, though Grand Design believes the problem has been exaggerated. Quote, rumors and misinformation have been swirling online regarding excessive frame flex across the industry, including a small percentage of our large solitude and momentum fifth wheel products, a statement from Grand Design CEO and President Don Clark said. In each case, we perform a thorough review and are working directly with our customers to resolve concerns. Grand Design was slow to respond to the accusations. First, responding back in early March, we shared that with you with a frequently asked questions page on the website, giving some answers to FrameFlex questions. The warranty change seems to indicate that the company felt the social media frenzy had boiled over to the point where it needed to address the problem more directly. Quote, we've also been working directly with our frame supplier, a third party structural engineering firm and industry experts to ensure that our products and processes meet and exceed industry standards. Clark continued, our commitment to our customers is absolute and we continue to stand behind every product we build. At Grand Design, we are guided by our key principles, do the right thing, put people first and be the best. The warranty extension applies only to the frame, not the rest of the structure. It's not transferable either, meaning it only covers the original owner. Grand Design will also not cover issues with the frame related to damage caused by aftermarket hitches, overloading and certain other owner caused conditions. So look, I think Grand Design has reached a point where they needed to do something. It's late in the game. They really should have been out ahead of this. And this is a step. A, a, an official warranty extension is a step. And there are legal ramifications with that and everything. But it still comes down to the number of units that Grand Design admits are their fault. There is what Grand Design determines is this small amount of issues that they're having. And then there's this larger number of folks that are actually having issues. And some of these folks caused these issues. Some of these folks were overloaded. Some of these folks beat the heck out of these trailers. Some of them didn't. The only data that exists on this is owned by Grand Design. Nobody knows how many units are affected. So I think this is a step that Grand Design is taking. I don't think it's far enough. I don't think it's going to appease people who are very upset at this point. I will say I do know Grand Design has taken care of quite a few customers that have had this problem. They have really done right by a lot of customers. I know they have not done right by other customers. I don't think Grand Design should have pointed the finger and said that other people are experiencing this too. I don't think the statement set the right tone in any sense of the word when it begins with uh, the problem is exaggerated and overblown. But this is an industry wide issue where we have these trailer frames that are manufactured by a third party, then it's incumbent on the RV manufacturer to attach whatever they're attaching to that frame. And whether they do it properly or not is one question. Uh, whether that frame has been built properly or not, whether it has good welds and all that sort of stuff, the right engineering. But the bigger problem is we have so many different floor plans. We have so many different frames out there. So if one company has 50 different floor plans, you know, maybe there are 25 different frames that Lippert is supplying that company. And anytime they put a couple new floor plans out, maybe they're getting a new frame built for that. 
And there's just no longevity. There's no proving what works and using it again over and over when you're constantly putting new frames on these and you're attaching them in new ways and they're weighted differently and all that sort of stuff. I think Grand Design benefited perhaps from many years of people perhaps overrating their quality. And now I think they're gonna spend a little time being hurt by people who are perhaps underrating their quality. I don't think at this point, you know, I know there are a lot of people that are like Grand Design never Really what the situation here is, is the Grand Design isn't that different from any other RV company out there. And a number of these very big fifth wheels are gonna have some frame problems. And hopefully the manufacturer that you're working with is going to stand behind that. Again, I have seen many people say, "Grand, I've had this problem, Grand Design bought back my unit. Grand Design was, was there for me. Um, but we also know that Grand Design is having folks sign non-disclosure agreements. They're having them take down YouTube videos and stuff in order to get these buybacks done. Um, some of that is normal. If you have a pickup truck and it has a motor issue and Ford buys it back from you, they're going to have you sign a non-disclosure agreement. So I'm not totally surprised by that. But in a situation like this, where the company has been very quiet about this, in fact, they haven't even told us what the actual problem is. What is the problem? What is happening? What, what? What issue are people actually having? Just saying it's problems with frames doesn't tell us anything. Is it something Lippert did? Is it the way you're attaching them? What units are you actually having this problem on? Because I know people with reflections are having this problem too. So again, I think there's a lot more life to this moving forward and this is definitely not gonna be the last we hear about this. More in a moment, but first, RV Miles is sponsored by RV Life Pro. The RV lifestyle is about community and the RV community is at the heart of RV Life. RV Life recently celebrated the 1 millionth trip planned with RV Life Trip Wizard, their excellent trip planning tool for RVers. RV Trip Wizard features all the trusted reviews, pictures, and tips from their RV Life campground site. RV Life also features several blog sites and over 20 additional RVing forums to serve the RV community. All this experience and community feedback come together to help create a fantastic RV trip planner and mobile navigation tool collectively called RV Life Pro. RV Life also marked a milestone of over 3 billion miles traveled using RV Life Pro, counting both the planned RV trips and ad hoc navigation with the included RV Safe mobile app. Take 25% off RV Life Pro with the coupon code RV Miles by visiting RVLife.com. T Mobile has delayed changes to its home internet plan that would stop customers from traveling with it and has delayed the release of its $160 a month away plan meant for travelers. We shared with you uh, recently these stories. The mobile report is reporting that T-Mobile was set to begin address verification on the home internet plan on May 8th. The plan has become popular with RVers who are able to use it to travel across the US for $60 a month, even though the terms of service forbids using it away from your home address. T-Mobile has actively been encouraging customers to get the plan at RV shows and in store, but decided a few weeks ago to begin enforcing the terms of service and offer this new expensive away plan. T-Mobile was going to send out notifications to home internet subscribers, announcing a crackdown on using the service while on the go on Wednesday and require address verification. In a document obtained by the mobile report, it appears T-Mobile has put a pause on the launch of address verification. The document says that during the final pre-launch testing of the away plan, we encountered an issue with a setup that would have resulted in customer experience that didn't meet T-Mobile's high bar. We've gotten a lot of comments about this story. Um, a lot of folks that have called T-Mobile or have went to T-Mobile reps. And I have to tell you, if T-Mobile reps are telling you something, the folks that work in the stores and the folks that you call on the phone, they don't know anything. And especially the folks in the stores. I mean, if you've ever had a problem with your cell phone, have had to go into a cell store and have them fix it, they normally call somebody up and fix it. Don't listen to those folks, especially when they say things like, oh yes, it's unlimited. It's unlimited wherever you go. It's always unlimited. Yeah, it's unlimited, but it's gonna be throttled and all this sort of stuff. Don't listen to what the reps say. You need to get the actual information Again, I say this every time we talk about internet, 
please go over to the folks at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, rvmobileinternet.com, to get the best information on mobile internet out there. But if you have the T-Mobile home internet plan and you travel with it, I guess you got a little bit more time with it before they begin the address verification, which they will do. They are doing this. There are folks that have been in the comments saying they don't have the technology to do it. Well, apparently they, they don't have the technology. The technology didn't work out, but they're working on it. They're definitely planning on locking you out of that plan. Over 1,350 leaders in the RV industry gathered on Thursday for the annual Power Breakfast hosted by RV Business. It was actually a record crowd. The RV Miles team was there to cover it, and there were some fireworks from Marcus Lemonis, CEO and chairman of Camping World, the largest dealership chain in the U.S. I hesitate usually to come into these kinds of environments. I think I'm probably still public enemy number one. Um, but I am here to tell you that I am advocate for our industry, number one. Lemonis was set to answer some questions in a prearranged Q&A. He rarely does this type of thing. He doesn't appear at events like this at all. Instead of answering the first question, he really took the opportunity to address the crowd of the RV industry directly. We're talking about all the top brass of all the major companies. He began by reflecting on his time in the industry. I think my 23rd year in this industry it's been an unbelievable experience. Uh, I've spent half of my life in what I consider to be the greatest and most underappreciated industry that exists in our economy. For those of you that have been in this industry a long time, it has uh, provided food for your families, educated your kids, allowed you to save money for your retirement, and have built not only a lot of wealth, but a lot of relationships. I think as a group, we've all had these ups and downs, and we listen to economists and we listen to different people talk about all the trials and tribulations and the highs and the lows. But let this be really clear this morning. Uh, this industry is part of the fabric of the US economy, but it's more importantly, a part of the fabric of the US culture. And that everybody in this room is contributing to a lifestyle that allows people to affordably, more affordably than any other industry that provides leisure to enjoy this great country, to spend time with their families, and to do the things that we all want more of in our own life. Are we perfect? No, but we're pretty damn fucking good. Limonis then touted the industry's position in the American economy and then challenged the RV industry to do better, to make more product and to make it more affordable, saying that the RV industry is beginning to price out customers, ending generations of recurring RV ownership. We need to make a better product. We need the consumer to have it be more affordable. We need to make the pain points of service and service wait times and where I'm going to store my unit and where I'm going to take my unit those challenges still remain. What are we going to do to finally make that move collectively to something bigger and brighter? We saw our ability to make 600,000 units at the peak of COVID, and it tested the limits of supply chains and repair and quality and all of the things that we all work hard to try to make better. How do we as an industry come together without any ego, without any sort of land grab, to get to 750,000 units. Because in that moment where we get to 750 or a million, all of our lives change. We're able to employ more people, we're able to contribute to the communities that our businesses operate in more effectively, but we're able to more importantly, I think, grab market share from other industries that think they're as good as we are but they're not. The breakfast took place at a time when the RV industry is experiencing a bit of a slump with unit sales down 12.8% in the first quarter, but RV manufacturing up a bit over last year in anticipation of a decent second half to 2024. An economist was on hand at the breakfast to forecast what may happen with buyers, particularly as it pertains to interest rates in the coming months. I'm expecting the Federal Reserve will 
have its first rate cut in July of this year, and then they'll wait for the second one probably toward, um, you know, after the, uh, the elections. But I do expect 50 basis points in total for the year to come down on the Fed funds rate and uh, another four base, another four cuts in 2025. 20, uh, Toby O'Rourke, CEO of KOA, the nation's largest campground chain, presented KOA's 10th annual camping report, which has become sort of the main barometer for the health of the camping industry. There's a lot of great stuff in this report, so much so that I'm going to give it its own episode. And KOA has broken some of this data into 10 mini reports that I'll share with you as they release them. But top line, nearly 88 million households identify as campers and nearly 54 million households took a camping trip in 2023. Over the past decade, the number of overall camping households increased by 23%. The number of active camping households, those that have camped in the last year, surged 68%. Tent usage is up 56%. RV usage is up 96%. And cabin and glamping usage is up 101%. And there's been a 98% increase in the number of households who camp three or more times in a year. The Michigan Natural Resources Commission met Thursday to determine whether electric bikes will be allowed on 3,000 miles of state park managed non motorized trails. Current Michigan law allows class one pedal assisted electric bikes with speeds up to 20 miles an hour on paved gravel or asphalt surfaces, but not natural surface trails. The DNR proposal would expand class one e-bike use to natural surface trails that are already open to regular bicycles. The proposal would also expand operation of class two e-bikes for permitted individuals on paved trails. That's it for this RV and camping news roundup. Hit the like button if you got something out of this video. Subscribe if you want more like it, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye-bye.